Up next, we have Lucille Tanasis with the designer as cultural nomad, or I'm a good traveler, but a bad tourist. Lucille. Thank you for having me here. So let me just tell you where I came from. I was in San Francisco for 20 years, where I taught at California College of the Arts. And so you can imagine when I landed, uh, when I came to New York, where I actually was here in the early 80s, um, the horizontality of California gave way to the verticality of New York. So I'm a good traveler, but a bad tourist. So let me go back to where I came from. I think you know the difference between what a traveler is and what a tourist is. So let me begin with my timeline. I came from the Philippines in 1979. I grew up in Manila. I landed in San Francisco. I went to CCAC, and then I took my portfolio to, to Michigan, where I went to Cranbrook Academy of Art in 1982. And I was introduced to Charles and Ray Eames. I actually had a chance to give Ray Eames a tour of Cranbrook. As a young designer, everybody wants to go to New York because it's a city that pushes you over the edge. And I think as young people, we have to go to places that push us over the edge. So I decided to come here in 1982. But then, three years later, one of my teachers from San Francisco asked me to return to teach in San Francisco. And I said, you know, I'm not ready to leave New York. But at the same time, I thought, I don't want to leave New York and leave in a huff. And maybe New York will be here anyway, and I can always return. So I left in 1985, and I realized 20 years later, there was an opportunity to return, but through a, saw, through a uh, side trip to Rome. My husband was a photographer, who is a photographer, was given the um, Rome Prize, and so we lived in Rome for a year with two of our kids. After Rome, we decided not to return to San Francisco, and it was one of those decisions where you say, okay, if you're packed up, why don't you just continue with the adventure? And we did. So we came back in 2006. So this is where I'm from. Some of you may not know the Philippines, or some of you know it, but you may not know it's made of 7,000 islands. And there are um, over 120 dialects. And so from that, I think my interest in language was born. I'm, I'm a designer, but I look at linguistics in a way that is visible. So when I applied to Cranbrook from Manila, I was rejected twice because I sent this picture. And at the time, you could submit your photograph, actually, in your application form, and now it's illegal. So when they saw this picture, they probably looked at me and they said, and actually I found out, they said, you know, Lucille, with that hat, with that smile, you must not be serious. So I decided to return. I said, you know, I'm going to come back with a vengeance. You rejected me halfway around the world. I'm going to return. And I built up my portfolio in San Francisco and showed it now to my teachers at Cranbrook, and they were, like, blown away. And they said, when did you do this? And I said, yeah, six months in San Francisco. This is what I did. They said, well, we'll take you. So this is my evolution. I don't have white hair. In, I mean, <laughs> the hair is different, but this was my transition when I was at Cranbrook. And one of the projects I did, which really introduced me to what visual and and uh, linguistic processes were, was I went, we were asked to go to a street section of Detroit. And I said, what do we do here? And they said, you are in graduate school. You have to ask those questions. I'm not providing answers to you. And so I just like went to a street section, chose my block, took pictures. Here were the pictures. And then I decided I have to figure out what I can do with these photographs, and I chose to look at typography. So these were my first explorations in 1981 on visual and typographic hybridity. So when I was asked to teach at Parsons, which I started in, in 2008, I thought, how can I make my, my students be, tour be travelers and not tourists? So one of my students did this. She said, I live in Manhattan. And every day, I'm going to open the map of New York, and I will walk a letter form. And so every day, she would open the map, 
and just draw a letter and walk it. So she made 26 books, and each book is a documentation of that journey, her role as a traveler. And one of the projects I've been doing of late is I tell my students to go north, south, east, west, and I divide the class. Your group goes north up to 23rd. You go east as far as 4th Avenue, you go west as far as the West Side Highway, and you go south as far as Washington Square. And they say, what do we do? You have to figure something out. It was the same question that my teacher told me. The same project I was given in 1981, when I had no answers. And she said, as a designer, you have to sometimes look for those questions, because that is what you're supposed to do. And so it's a little bit unnerving for my students to say, what am I going to do if I go north? So one student said, you know, Lucille, I'm just going to ask people, when was the last time they talked to their mom? And I said, you know, that's a little tricky. Because if, what if they don't have a mom? And what if they don't talk to their mom? I mean, that happens, right? You don't want to put them in uncomfortable positions. And she said, oh, OK, I get it. Think about it. What can you ask people who you are asking for a second? And what do you ask them? So she said, I have an idea. I'm going to ask them, what reminds you of home? So here is the book, 50 New Yorkers who were asked, what reminds you of home? And the only, I'm going to read just one, because I thought that was wonderful. One woman said, Mom's spaghetti. She said, I have to design a, spaghetti, uh, a recipe for spaghetti and meatballs. Ingredients, number one, mom. Number two, spaghetti. Number three, meatballs. Number three, tomato sauce. Number one, and number ne next one, salt. And then she reads, I don't know if I can read this. Watch mom boil a large pot of water. Add salt and spaghetti until al dente. Anyway, towards the end, she says, put on Frank Sinatra and enjoy dinner with mom. So that was a book. I'm going to show you now my position at Parsons through this business card. I am the Henry Wolf professor in communication design. And who was Henry Wolf? He was an Austrian designer who came to the United States. And he's called the grandfather of American magazine design. This is what I call my official card. And this is my other card, which is my visual identity. But I want to end with this quote that my teacher, Catherine McCoy from Cranbrook, said. And this is what always inspires me when I tell my students, just walk up the street. Don't bring your phone and don't bring your computer. Because designers who design like machines will be replaced by machines. And it is not the digital, but the intuitive, and not the measurable, but the poetic, and not the mechanical, but the sensual that humanizes design. And I hope in 30 more years, I will see them and they will tell me, Lucille, I'm still a designer. Thank you.